Welcome. Thank you for joining the San Jose Museum of Art for another Museum from Home session. I'm Paulina Vu, Manager of Museum Experience and today's program producer and Q&A host. A few quick notes before we begin. Our program is approximately 45 minutes and will include a Q&A at the end. If you'd like to submit a question, please scroll to the bottom of your screen to where you see the Q&A icon to do so. We are excited to further conversations that our partners at the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts and the Fowler Museum have begun in relation to the Rena Banerjee exhibition. With the behind the scenes look at it, as well as other exhibitions led by its designer. A lifelong resident of the San Francisco Bay Area, Richard Carson has been with SJMA since 1989. Throughout his tenure, Rich has collaborated with a wide range of nationally and internationally recognized artists, museums, on exhibition design and presentation. He has overseen the design and production of over 250 exhibitions for SJMA and is a recognized industry leader on award-winning exhibition design for graphics, branding, lighting, and the presentation of digital media products. It's my pleasure to introduce Rich Carson, Director of Design and Operations and primary design architect for making a summary of the world at SJMA and PATHA for a look into how exhibitions are made. Thank you, Paulina, and thank you to everyone for joining us today. I hope you and your families are all staying safe and healthy. Like most of you, I'm social distancing from the confines of my home, but I'm excited about the opportunity today to share some insights into what goes into making an exhibition. I'll focus on the stages of design, planning, and collaboration, and illustrate how those stages lead us to the physical installation of exhibitions in the museum's galleries. This four chapter overview will initially touch on our planning, design, and installation phases, using images from a variety of projects at the San Jose Museum of Art. The fourth chapter, of this program will be a deep dive into the cross-country collaboration of Rena Banerjee, Make Me a Summary of the World, an exhibition which was co-organized with the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts, or PAFA. Using examples from an Andy Goldsworthy installation, as well as our Withdrawn Arms, Din Q. Lay, and Rena Banerjee exhibitions, I hope to shed light on the collaborative process of putting together an exhibition. Essentially, I hope to illustrate the synthesis of artistic vision, curatorial vision, design, and installation technical expertise. Focusing on the design and production aspects of exhibition development, I think it is important to acknowledge that this program is not a museum-wide overview of how an exhibition comes together, but rather a detailed and focused look inside the design and production areas and the role we play in collaboratively delivering SJMA's exhibition program. It assumes that the steady, deliberate, and careful work by all museum departments has laid a foundation upon which we in the exhibition production area can build upon. As a group, they are the scaffold that supports our design and production areas. For those of us in the field of museums and exhibitions, collaboration begins early before the exhibits ever make their way to our galleries. In short, this is a look over the stanchions, through the curtain, and into the private spaces of exhibition production. Today, the behind the scenes moves to the foreground, and in doing so, I hope to reveal some of the stories that occur throughout the process of exhibition production. I'll begin with a short time-lapse video, capturing the stages of a site-specific installation by artist Andy Goldsworthy, titled Burnt Patch.
The previous video reveals the network of people involved in producing these installations. The creative decision making and sometimes intuitive and random element introduced to the process. This first set of images illustrates the sorting of material and the mapping of the inner circle in the museum's courtyard. In 1995, as this artwork was being acquired by the museum, I worked with the artist to install this piece as part of a larger exhibition titled Breath of Earth. With appropriate permissions, we collected these branches from a forest in South Lake Tahoe. Working alongside Goldsworthy, I was able to document the stages of installation and learn his process. In the decades that have followed, we have exhibited the work many times without the artist being present. This initial collaboration with the artist and broad understanding of his process has effectively allowed us to mimic Goldsworthy's artistic intentions and to ensure that the artwork is properly installed each time. And here's a final installation image taken from our rooftop, looking down into the courtyard. This image is a glimpse into our exhibitions department production area. Once an exhibition concept is put on our internal exhibition calendar, the process of research, design, collaboration, and planning immediately begins. Depending on the nature of the project, I'll begin by meeting with curators, artists, and colleagues throughout the industry. Collaboration is built into what we do. It is built into our process. This initial phase of meetings, research, and learning paves the way for exhibition design. A detailed understanding of the artist's work, the curatorial vision, and the technical requirements all inform the shape and scope of the exhibition design. Design requires critical thought, patience, time, and creative energy. First and foremost, design is an iterative process that requires both precision and flexibility. Curatorial ideas and themes begin to merge with the physical spaces. During the design phase, many options and possibilities are considered in relation to the physical gallery environment. Early designs begin as sketches and rough drawings. As these visual ideas evolve, through iteration and technical problem solving, they soon become detailed digital renderings. I believe an informed and successful design will guide the visitor through an exhibition in a thoughtful and organized manner respectful of the artistic and curatorial intent, but that it will also leave room for individual interpretation, discovery, and wandering. Once an exhibition design has been fully developed, it becomes our roadmap, our guide, our blueprint for the physical installation. An integral part of the development of an exhibition's design is its graphic identity. Each exhibition graphic is uniquely designed to capture and communicate the sensibility of an exhibition. These graphic identities are shared widely in any related marketing, print, and social media initiatives, and often signal the entrance to the exhibition in the museum gallery spaces. Our exhibition graphics are almost exclusively produced in-house. The development of an exhibition's graphic package requires its own distinct creative production and installation timelines. Deconstructing the exhibition's individual component, components leads us to the next phase, which is project planning. 
This new stage of the project is a decoding and deciphering of the numerous installation requirements. Now equipped with our exhibition design, we continue a detailed study of the individual components that make up an exhibition. We can begin to launch our plans for exhibition components like the lighting design, wall construction, wall color, technical requirements, required production materials, equipment, as well as installation staffing, courier and contractor involvement in the process. Project planning requires keen vision and a precise look into the future. It is understanding the destination or desired result in advance, breaking down the journey into multiple small steps and mapping out the path towards completion. Timelines are developed, calendars are created, and installation staffing is secured and scheduled. These color-coded calendars represent one of the systems we use to organize our project planning. Each color represents a particular thread of the project, such as graphics or fabrication or art installation. The adjustable notes allow for flexibility and visual clarity that can quickly be communicated to the production team. It is a systemized approach where we set a plan for success, balancing the exhibition requirements alongside both time and resources available. In advance of the installation period, materials are acquired, exhibition furniture and pedestals are produced, installation staffing is confirmed, calendars and scheduling is also confirmed. In the case of digital projects, equipment and digital files are sourced, prepared, and rigorously tested. The period of installation is where all of the months and sometimes years of design, planning, and collaboration come to fruition. They are busy, scripted, highly coordinated, and action-packed weeks where the physical transformation of the gallery space occurs. All of the pieces of the exhibition design, the project planning, the related support staff come together in these moments of installation. Depending on the scope and scale of a project, its technical requirements and its location within the museum, an installation could take anywhere from two to five weeks with many factors contributing to that timeline. It is during these very finite time periods that an exhibition is removed, the galleries are prepared and refinished, and the new exhibition is installed. In addition to the full-time staff of the exhibitions department, those responsible for the transformation of the gallery spaces are the installation crew members. These gifted team members are tasked with deinstalling and preparing exhibitions for shipment, prepping and painting the gallery spaces, as well as any and all details related to the production and installation of the new exhibition. It is safe to say that everything which occurs in the gallery from the moment a show closes until the point where the stanchions and curtains are removed to open a new exhibition involves this talented and creative group. After an exhibit has been removed from the galleries, construction, painting, and exhibition-specific build-outs occur. These tightly coordinated events occur in rapid succession, often overlapping to allow for adequate installation time. Once the new preparations are complete and the gallery has been thoroughly cleaned, a new exhibition is brought into the gallery space. The new exhibition typically arrives in crates or soft pack materials for travel. An example of the installation process can be illustrated by a selection of behind the scenes images from an exhibition titled Withdrawn Arms, Glenn Kino and Tommy Smith. During these initial phases, construction, painting, and any other necessary infrastructure requirements are put in place. In the case of this exhibition, an intricate rigging was designed and attached to the building's architecture to support this site-specific installation along the length of the gallery. <clears throat> the 
The artwork was then brought into the galleries and components were carefully unpacked by a team of art handlers. During this process, objects were arranged and prepared for installation. The 70-foot site-specific artwork titled Bridge by Glenn Kaino arrived in several hundred pieces, packed in numerous crates, which required careful handling, assembly, and installation. This final image illustrates the completed installation with its unique lighting scheme, specifically designed for this large-scale art object. So as you can see from all of these images, the installation sequence of gallery preparation, unpacking, infrastructure installation, artwork installation, and lighting must be carefully structured to make space and time for each. This coordination helps ensure the safety of the artwork and that the installation staff has adequate time and space to complete each phase of the project. The following images further represent the collaborative nature of our work through the juxtaposition of in-process production images set alongside final installation images. Each example illustrates the interconnected nature of exhibition production and artistic vision. This interdependency and collaboration between the artist and the production team is often a facet of the exhibition that very few people witness firsthand. Here you see two of our team members literally building the artwork onto the wall using materials supplied by the artist. Finally, a quick look at an installation of artwork by the artist Din Q. Lei from an exhibition titled True Journey is Return. These images further illustrate this interdependency between the artist and the production team. The entire volume of artwork designated for our central skylight gallery was removed from this single crate. These woven photo tapestries arrived rolled together on a cardboard tube inside this crate and needed to then be carefully unrolled and separated into their distinct groupings. Methodically, the individual pieces were suspended from the ceiling and carefully assembled. Using colored tape, we mirrored a network of ceiling hanging points onto the gallery floor. This allowed us to position the artwork as well as all of the related hanging requirements. Once the installation of artwork was complete, the gallery was cleared and prepared for lighting. This final image shows quite dramatically the impact lighting design can have on the way we experience an exhibition. And now Rena Banerjee, make me a summary of the world. I first learned of the idea of a Rena Banerjee exhibition from Jody Throckmorton, curator of contemporary art at the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts. As a former SJMA colleague, we got together, met in San Jose over coffee as she outlined the project. Her hope was to find a West Coast venue and collaborator for an exhibition of artwork by Rena Banerjee an exhibition that she also wanted to tour nationally. Throughout the following months, discussions between PATHA and SJMA moved forward. As the exhibition started to gain traction, details and further logistical considerations began to emerge. The project was really cemented into place about 18 months before the show was to open in San Jose. At that time, I found myself in a meeting at SJMA with Jody and Lauren Dickens, SJMA's senior curator, discussing Rena Banerjee's artwork, co-organizing the project, and plans for the national tour of the exhibition. Soon, the contracts were signed, and together, the two institutions launched plans 
for the exhibition. Efforts to refine the exhibition checklist, develop its catalog and tour accelerated quickly. And our process of design, planning and collaboration took off from there. So how did we get from here to there? How did we get and move the idea from concept to completion? A year and a half before the exhibition premiered in San Jose, I visited Jody in Philadelphia to discuss the technical and design aspects of the exhibition in depth. This early collaborative process was really the heartbeat of the research phase that would eventually produce our first exhibition designs. We were joined in these meetings by Rena Banerjee. Our conversations revolved the around the physical structure of the exhibition, the mood of the exhibition, and the technical requirements related to the assembly of these large scale installations. As PAFA moved forward to premiere the exhibition, the exhibition design and planning stages began to take shape at SJMA on a separate but parallel track. Returning to San Jose, and now equipped with a much greater understanding of the exhibition, Lauren Dickens and I began our conversations about how the exhibition design would look in San Jose. The galleries at PAFA and SJMA are very different. So while the nucleus of the exhibition would be similar at each institution, the presentation and exhibition design would need to respond to the differences in the galleries. The key would be to integrate and maintain the artist's ideas and the curatorial concepts. This collaborative and iterative process with both the exhibition team in Philadelphia and in San Jose would propel our exhibition design forward. And about six months before the opening of the exhibition in San Jose, we had our roadmap. As problem solvers, when a problem has been assigned or one reveals itself along the way, we'll stop at nothing until we find an answer. I created this cardboard maquette to help identify and solve the engineering challenges of suspending a 20 foot by 20 foot by 20 foot structure, one foot above the gallery floor in a gallery that had a glass ceiling. We tested a range of cabling options on a small scale until we were confident in a final engineering design for our installation. Following the eventual installation of the exhibition at PAFA in October of 2018, a second visit to Philadelphia was arranged to attend a tour planning meeting. This gathering brought together staff members from all five organizations that would be participating in the national tour of the exhibition. It was in these meetings that I once again met with the exhibitions team at PAFA. I was able to examine the installed exhibition with scrutiny and make numerous observations regarding the assembly of the artwork that would assist in my planning for an installation at SJMA. I was also introduced to John Umflett, a longtime collaborator of Rena Banerjee's. Having previously understood that his involvement in the installation would be critical, plans for his assistance with the installation in San Jose were cemented in these meetings. Back at work in San Jose, there were soon a series of detailed department meetings and installation timeline development meetings with both SJMA and PAFA staff. Along the way, a full installation team was put in place Final plans and schedules were confirmed and all installation materials and supplies were collected. This image shows our installation calendar and development and some of the exhibition graphics being produced in advance of the installation. In April of 2019, the moment had arrived to begin the installation of the exhibition in San Jose. Spanning numerous galleries, the exhibition design called for extensive retrofitting and repainting of the galleries. 
Large platforms designed to both support and protect the artwork were staged in one of the galleries for painting. The exhibition arrived in three separate shipments. As the created artwork was unloaded, it was distributed to various locations throughout the galleries. In many instances, a single piece of work within the exhibition would be comprised of multiple parts and pieces, often distributed over numerous crates. It takes many people to realize these complex projects. There were approximately 25 technicians involved in the physical installation of the exhibition at the San Jose Museum of Art. The San Jose Museum of Art's exhibitions department team was joined by our installation crew, as well as by John Umflett, Rena's collaborator, Jennifer Johns, the registrar at PATHA, and multiple international couriers, and of course, Rena Banerjee and her assistant, Liam Bailey. In this pair of images, you see the materials and artwork being, uh, beginning to be staged throughout the gallery in preparation for installation. In the image on the left, we literally set up an in-gallery workshop for Rena to use as a location where she could build and modify many of the individual components in her artwork. The first part of the installation process involves unpacking the various art objects and staging them on blankets in their respective installation locations. Works and pieces are assessed and the installation team spends time examining the objects in preparation for installation. An inherent part of the process is setting up a central in-gallery workspace for the installation team as well. Centralizing manuals, diagrams, floor plans, photographs, and technical notes. These materials are continually referenced throughout the day by the installation team and serve as a guide and a series of cross checks to the detailed assemblies. Multiple in-gallery meetings with the exhibition's curator, Lauren Dickens, occurred regularly throughout this process to review placement of the objects and to make any on-the-spot refinements to the exhibition design as the work gets underway. Here the team has begun the process of assembling the artwork onto the walls. Metal armatures were often attached to the wall and adorned with the artist's carefully chosen materials and assemblies. Many of Rena Banerjee's large-scale installations require a phased sequence of assembly. Parts are carefully laid out and identified, an assembly sequence is reviewed by the team, and then the assembly begins. In the case of this piece on the left, titled A World Lost, the initial build took place on a temporary metal stand. The stand allowed for multiple elements to be connected and form the overall framework for the artwork, which otherwise would have collapsed under its own weight without it. This temporary stand enabled the framework to hover above the ground while the various components were attached. Eventually, this piece was lifted with the assistance of a hoist directly from the stand to a hanging cable attached to the ceiling above. And on the right side of this image, you now see the piece, A World Lost, hanging from the ceiling, free from its assistive installation stand. Building this exhibition relied on the extensive skill and care of a small army of professionals. It required a collaborative approach and a weaving together of various artistic perspectives. Essentially, the resulting exhibition became the synthesis of artistic vision, curatorial vision, design and installation technical expertise. It was a pure collaboration on multiple levels. In the many years that I have been documenting behind the scenes production processes, this image might be my favorite photograph from the thousands of images I have captured. This image at this particular moment in time during the installation reveals a number of details about how our various processes are being woven together. The bones of the exhibition begin to emerge in the metal armatures 
that serve as the foundation for the exhibition. In it, I see the lines of a drawing, the early stages of a final composition. You see clearly the concept of creating a foreground, middle ground, and background in our exhibition design. Concepts that were first discussed with the artists in Philadelphia and later refined with the curator. In this photograph, you also see the beginnings of how these works would come to form a sort of all-encompassing wonderland within the gallery, a soon-to-be pink palace represented only by a few distant pink lines. These important ideas have to this point required steady visualization and planning. Most evident is the meticulously coordinated teamwork and reliance on the skill of the installation team, the staging, the organization. It is a snapshot which has frozen together the essence of our design, planning, and production processes. These next few images are a brief photo album of the installation of the piece titled, Take Me, Take Me, Take Me to the Palace of Love. The central dome was positioned with and supported by a scissor lift in order to position its final location. Next, the wall panels were attached. Here you see the central dome and sectioned wall pieces coming together. Along the way, cable tensions were checked as more and more elements were added to the structure. Here we see the final assembly of the central hanging components, a heavy carved wooden chair and all of its amazing ornamentation. Again, I'll point out the many hands involved in this process. For the installation of the work entitled Viola, we suspended a large canopy or parachute form from our 30 foot lobby ceiling. This piece would then need to be connected to a figure in an adjacent space by a network of hundreds of strings. Beyond hanging this piece from the ceiling, we were challenged with the prospect of attaching hundreds of pieces of string to this apparatus without any entanglement. This elegant solution of using a large metal ring and ribbon allowed for the string to be woven and separated in bunches. Once the hanging canopy was raised into position, these bundled sections of string were then lifted to the adjacent gallery using a scissor lift, where they were eventually going to be attached to a figure. Here you see the artist carefully guiding the strings into position and preparing them for attachment to the figure. Some final adjustments and minor untangling of the strings. and then final attachment to the figure, located above in an adjacent gallery space. To complete the installation of this piece, Rena added sand and floor elements around the base of the figure and below the path of the string. Most of the sculptural pieces in the exhibition required a very staged sequence of assembly. And these last two installation images the teams are adding the final layers of materials and components to a variety of artworks. The range and breadth of materials used by Rena in her work is topic for a conversation in and of itself. But suffice it to say, this time consuming and delicate process had countless rewards along the way. And this was followed by an evening of lighting and our central skylight gallery, completely installed and ready for viewing.
additional works in the Museum South Gallery. Skybridge Gallery. The image on the left from our North Gallery and again back into our Central Gallery. So once again, looking at the piece, A World Lost, as a final thought, I would like to draw your attention to this amazing field of sand and objects on the gallery floor, arranged by the artist in hiding in plain sight, was a tiny homage to PAFA and SJMA, represented in the forms of the Liberty Bell and a small wooden model of SJMA's historic building. And that is how we got from here to there, from concept to completion. I would like to thank and express my thanks once again to all of the incredible staff members at the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts and the San Jose Museum of Art who helped guide this exhibition from concept to a beautiful reality. Their passionate invest investment of creative energy and skill collectively coalesced and resulted in the presentation of this amazing exhibition by the amazing artist, Rena Banerjee. That marks the end of my presentation. And I believe there will be a short question and answer portion. Hello, I'm back. So thank you, Rich, for the uh, preview into the numerous exhibitions that you've been responsible for. Um, I think uh, before we get to the audience questions, which there seems to be quite a bit of, uh, a question that I have for myself is, uh, do you have a sub subscription service for post-it notes? <laughs> Uh, no, not necessarily, but I sneak around the museum when people aren't looking and take them off their desks. No, uh, it's just something that has worked for us for a lot of reasons that I already touched on. Um, but it's a system that seems to work. It's easy to stand in front of a table <clears throat> and look at one of those calendars with a large group of people rather than looking at a computer screen or something. Uh, so it's just sort of evolved over time into a system that works really well. So I'm going to uh, go to some audience questions. It looks like uh, Robin uh, has a question. And the question is, what is the lead time for planning an exhibition schedule relative to other planned exhibitions and prior to the research, sketching, and renderings, et cetera? Well, that's a, there's a lot into that question. Um, the, the curatorial side of it begins long before it lands on my desk. Um, there's a significant amount of research and exploration that our curators are doing in order to put the exhibition calendar together. Um, usually we're uh, about two years or more in advance of an opening date. Um, as I mentioned in the presentation, once that exhibition uh, becomes locked into our calendar and our schedule, we immediately begin the process of meeting with the curator and or artists involved in the exhibition to plan out our next steps. Okay. Uh, another question also from Robin, how much flexibility, if any, does SJMA have in mounting a traveling show and deciding its layout, graphic look, et cetera? Um, let me, let me start with the second part of that question. The graphic look is something that we sort of um, were in touch with PAFA about in the early stages. Um, because the tour was going to have a catalog produced uh, with essays by both curators and both directors of the institutions, um, we decided that we were just going to come up with a single graphic identity for both PAFA's installation, our installation, and beyond. Uh, because the catalog would be a, you know, sort of a visual equivalent. Can you remind me what the first part of that question was? <laughs> the first part of the question was, um, you know, how much flexibility is there uh, for um, our organization in, you know, mounting a traveling show? 
Uh, I would say there's a significant amount of flexibility. Um, the gallery spaces, uh, as evidenced from some of the images I showed, are, are very different. Um, so as far as the groupings within the exhibition, the relation between one work and another, uh, that's something that really sort of settled into the spaces that we have available for the exhibition. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, we could basically spend time and, and carve out areas and niches for these small spaces uh, or, or for these groupings. Um, sometimes the requirements for a piece really do dictate where they go. Uh, for example, the piece in the lobby that I showed at the end and some of the taller pieces in our central space uh, really would not have fit in any other gallery other than those. So quite a bit of flexibility. And one last thing, uh, we did actually add a couple of uh, works from local collectors to our exhibition. And as the exhibition moved forward, uh, some of the works were sent back to their lenders before they went to UCLA. So there's sort of an evolution of the exhibition over time, but the, you know, for the most part, it stays intact. And then also at PAPA, that show was installed with their exhibitions, um, like as a part of um, uh, its surroundings too. So that's also a, a difference, right, in just our two organizations in the presentation of that particular exhibit where they had existing work that was there and it was accompanying that versus ours you were starting with you know i'll be a different space but you know it's a, an open and, and and space that was just around the show yeah um jody and at patha really wanted to sort of connect some of the ideas in rena's work to some of the historical pieces in the collection at patha and really did a magnificent job of making those connections by supporting Rena's work with existing work in their permanent collection. We have a uh, question from Steve. How does safety of the artworks figure into uh, the exhibition? Into the exhibition? Uh, design, uh -huh. sorry. Uh, quite significantly. Um, as part of our planning, as part of our meetings, we're meeting with um, uh, our registration team and curators all together who are thinking about these things and how the public will be interacting with them. Whether or not somebody could walk into that pink palace that we hung or not, whether we can have a school group go in there. Uh, and some of the more sensitive wall pieces, those platforms that we produced were placed in front of the wall to keep a little space uh, between the artwork and the viewer because of their delicacy. So uh, one of our viewers had a very watchful eye. Um, question is, uh, what is up with that crock pot that was in the banner view install? <laughs> um, we were not making stew. Um, it was actually for melting wax, which was used quite significantly in a number of the wall pieces. Uh, we had uh, beeswax in blocks available for Rena uh, per her request and the crock pot was used to melt the wax and keep it liquid uh, for a short period of time as it was being applied to various materials. Good catch. <laughs> and a question from Summer Love, love your name by the way, for the Goldsworthy, how long was the actual install? Hours, days, uh, and then same question for Rena, hours, days, when on site? Uh, for Goldsworthy, that was approximately three days to build that piece. Um, with, uh, as you can see from the video, you know, two or three people at a time. Um, for Rena, uh, we actually had a longer than typical installation period uh, because of the complexity of the work. Uh, a lot of the works, as I pointed out, really needed to be assembled, and that takes time. Uh, additionally, Rena was on site for a significant period of time. Uh, dressing the works and at each venue she'll modify some of those floor pieces, some of the small little surrounding uh, objects to tailor it to each specific installation. So those pieces that were on the floor, uh, the sand, the figurines and things like that, shells, fabric, uh, those are all sort of looked at by the artist as site specific but connected to the work that they're associated with. So yeah we were about probably four and a half to five weeks just of installation, um, as opposed to you know, not including the gallery preparation and removing the previous exhibition.
So uh, we have a question from um, someone that you might know, Adam. His question is, is the artwork in your home installed on a 58 uh, foot center line? Uh, I, I'm pretty sure he means 58 inch center line. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> no, <laughs> it varies per space and hello to Adam from Sweden. I'm so happy you're able to join us. Uh, question from Jennifer. What is uh, your background and what experience uh, or study do you consider most helpful for your job? Uh, for, for me personally, it's uh, quite a bit of this is on the job experience. You, you find very few resources for this type of work. Um, but a quick look at my background. Um, I have a degree in art history and a minor in anthropology. As I was in college, I was fascinated with uh, going to museums like most people that end up working in them. Uh, there was a museum on the campus where I was at and uh, ended up getting a job as a installation technician. And I immediately fell in love with sort of the behind the scenes aspects of seeing an, an exhibition come together, working with the artists, working with the staff, seeing how decisions were made and, and working as a team to see how these projects resulted in these exhibitions. Uh, additionally, I was working in a theater uh, as a scene designer, uh, and really gained quite a bit of experience with, uh, with the lighting side of things. And I think that all sort of just came together for me. Uh, I started at the San Jose Museum of Art on the installation crew as a part-time staff member uh, and eventually uh, grew into the role that I'm in today. Um, a question from Aaron. Uh, what's your most challenging project and how, um, you know, that, did you solve those problems, the unexpected ones that are, arise during the install? It's a very difficult question to answer uh, because I've been at the museum for 30 years. There have been a number of challenging projects in different ways, shapes, and forms. Um, one of the ones that leaps to the top of my mind is uh, we did a large scale exhibition by the work of Nam Jun Paik. Uh, these massive, massive video walls and video installations. We had to bring in electricians to essentially rewire the entire second floor of our, our new wing at the time. Um, and it was a significant amount of unpacking four truckloads of crates. Uh, it, was, it was a mammoth project. Uh, and obviously there was a great amount of elation when it was over and satisfaction, but that one really stands out as probably the most technically challenging, uh, given all the potential variables that could have gone sideways. <laughs> uh, we have another specific question from artist Tony May. Hi, Tony. Uh, were the sticks in the Goldsworthy piece burned on site? Hi, Tony. Um, no, the sticks from the Goldsworthy piece, uh, so I collected those with Andy Goldsworthy in the Sierras. We brought them back to San Jose, uh, to the museum's loading dock, where we um, sprayed them for, for insects. Then they were actually brought over to the foundry, the outdoor portion of the foundry at San Jose State, and burnt in sort of a bonfire way um, outside. So we spent probably the better part of a day burning a number of sticks, charring them completely, burning some edges of sticks, um, and over time, as we store those sticks, some of the little charred pieces come off. And so when I install the piece, I usually have a blowtorch uh, kind of by my side and just sort of re-darken some of the areas where the, where the uh, cinders have fallen off the sticks. Uh, one other quick note on the Goldsworthy is that that piece is a really process-oriented piece. And each time it's installed, I don't know if you could tell from the images, I was breaking the pieces to fit them into the little you know, zones that were being created uh, for, the, for the forms within the piece. Um, so over time, we're ending up more and more small sticks. So there is this constant infusion of new material uh, every decade or so when the piece is installed. Uh, we do have to go back to this location in the Sierra Mountains and get our appropriate permi permissions again and collect uh, a large volume of sticks to, to prepare for a new installation.
Thank you. Uh, we have a question from Joanne, and that is, how long between the taking down of the show at PAFA to the opening at SGMA? Oh uh, boy, I'm not exactly sure. It was very tight. Uh, there wasn't a day lost, I can tell you that. Uh, the team at PAFA worked exceptionally hard late into the evenings, over the weekends to pack up the show. Uh, because it came out in three different shipments, um, a portion of the exhibition was deinstalled, immediately crated and put onto a truck, and that truck made its way across the country. Uh, and as that truck was traveling, they were working on deinstalling the second portion. Um, I, would, I can't speak for them as far as how long it took them to deinstall their exhibition, but it typically takes about a week for an exhibition to travel by truck across the country, especially from the Northeast to California. And a last question from me, Rich, any words of wisdom or anything that you would like to share with the, the audience before we conclude our program? Well, I'm not sure if I have too many words <laughs> of wisdom to distribute, but I would like to thank everybody for, for their interest in this program. Um, I think you can see there's a lot of people involved in this process and uh, we really do take our work very, very seriously. And the end goal for us is to present uh, this artistic and curatorial vision in a way that is exceptional and we hope ultimately enjoyed by everybody who comes to see it. Thank you everyone uh, for joining us for today's program.